Mel McQuaid or someone else that we covered. So stay with us. We will be here all along. But this was recorded earlier. Uh, the athletes, if you're following on the tracker, are further ahead of this. But we are going to cut to live coverage uh, in a few minutes. But do stay with us as we make that transition and the pro athletes ending this first loop of the Ventum bike course. And uh, we will continue to bring you all of the action here as we continue uh, our coverage of the 2019 Dignity Health Medical Group Ironman Arizona with Lauren Brandon, our race leader, uh, followed by Sarah Crowley in second place as they approach the end of this first loop uh, of the Ventum bike course. Yeah, there you have it. And we have, uh, we see on the side of the road there, we have the red bag. So that's going to be a, the special need area 
uh, for once the athletes get through uh, through two laps, they'll be able to grab special needs, whatever they've uh, kind of set out for themselves in that red bag uh, if the, they think they might need later in the day, whether it's some extra food or maybe a note from mom, uh, any, from mom. <laughs> anything that uh, you might uh, want to have to, to keep you motivated throughout the end of the race. But that's kind of the zone that they just passed or that Lauren Brandon just passed there as she heads back into Tempe. And Lynn McIntosh asking if we're going to show Cozumel. You can follow the action in Cozumel by downloading the Iron Man app tracker, and you can follow the action there. Exciting races. Of the water behind the leader. They, tactically, they just need to, to, to get their way to the front uh, as quickly as they can, so to speak. But there's no, I don't think there's a reason for them to, to rush getting to the front. Yeah, certainly not. No, I would agree with that. And it, by my observation to uh, watching particularly Lindsay Corbin over the past few yep. years. Um, she used to be in more of a hurry on the bike, I think, and, and okay. potentially possibly over bike. Uh, I think she's gained a lot more confidence in her run. Um, and so more and more, particularly in Kona, she hasn't been an athlete that we've talked about a lot. She's not at the front of the race. And even on the bike, she's sort of slow to make her move, but always okay. powers right through. I, I think she's very, very dangerous in the last 10 miles of any marathon. Oh, I'd agree completely. Yeah. And I think, obviously, that's where, um, you know, they say bike for show, run for dough. Sure. Um, we say that too much. I apologize. I was hoping, <laughs> hoping to get through one race without saying that. But uh, it's true. And uh, you, you, you spoke to math earlier about, you know, a strong uh, swimmer maybe only getting five minutes, a strong cyclist. Uh, you know, they can get a, a big gap of time because there's a lot, of, a lot of time out on the bike, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. But the big swings are going to be from – a strong cyclist that's not running well to a great runner who's having a great run. Those swings can be 20 minutes, like, pretty easy. And that's that's the interesting thing. The more broadcasts we do and the more races we get to watch and observe, uh, I think it's really educational that, that we spend so much time, Lauren Brandon at the front of the race, Lauren Brandon, you know, racing great, and Sarah Crowley, and then in a matter of minutes, it seems, on the run, it can all evaporate very, very quickly because, again, the deeper we get into this race, uh, the more things, uh, if you miscalculate in the earlier stages, uh, can go sideways. So an athlete that we haven't spoken much about in the early stages of a race uh, can come on very, very strong uh, at the end, just depending on the dynamics of the race, and that's what makes it so exciting. <laughs> it, is so, <laughs> it is so exciting, no doubt, for sure. And uh, there we go. Sarah Crowley is still uh, pushing through, and, and we saw Lauren Brandon going through some of the corners there and taking them well, making sure she stays up because she's close to racing Ironman Florida is is something else it's something else and it's certainly it's obvious that he's going for the win and I will say that racing even if you're great in those conditions and he's running well and he's had a he won Ironman uh, 70.3 Cozumel with a fantastic run there um, not too long ago it is still very risky if you're pushing yes. your if you're running five minutes It's in a, in an hour fast pushing your body to its limits, and if it's that, high, so he's putting himself. He's going for the win, but he's putting himself in a position to not finish if he's overcooked it. But he's a guy who's willing to take chances <laughs> totally. like that. He, it's awesome. like, just to spend a little bit of time with him, he he really. I don't want to say he doesn't care, but he's willing to put himself out there, and he's willing to explode for the for the possibility of greatness. Uh, uh, was it a couple of years ago the the Commonwealth Games? He raced the, the short course triathlon uh, and the marathon all in the same Commonwealth Games oh, and then crazy. backed it up with, with some great Ironman racing in the months after that. So he's a really versatile athlete. Uh, again, another guy who trains a ton of volume and, and is willing to go for it. At this stage of his career, I don't feel like he feels like he has anything to prove, and yeah. he just wants to see what's possible, so he's absolutely going for it. Yeah, and he loves racing, and, uh, yeah, he, he does a great job of it. Uh, you're a professional cyclist uh, as well as... Uh...